Good morning, everyone. Uh, I want to thank the organizers for having me here and uh, Anand Prasad, whose guidance and mentorship have been um, excellent. So let's start off with the case. The gentleman is a 61-year-old uh, male. He's got a history of coronary disease, heart failure with reduced ejection fraction, diabetic on insulin. He's end stage renal, hypertensive, prior stroke, PAD, status post right, BKA. So he's got all the risk factors. Uh, referred by his podiatrist for management of left lower extremity CLI. Uh, the patient endorses significant rest pain. And here's a picture of his foot. Uh, so a uh, very significant gangrene of his great toe, a large uh, ulcerated uh, ulcer on his third toe, and just significant um, discoloration of the foot. Not something that we like seeing, obviously. So the uh, podiatrist performed something called fluorescence angiography, which I'll go in detail a little bit later in the presentation, but she did it to assist her in determining the level of amputation. Uh, when she saw this and the areas of white is what shows you perfusion, she saw there's perfusion and some perfusion in the foot, obviously some areas that lack significant perfusion, uh, but some perfusion there. And so that at that point, she decided uh, to re refer to us for potential revascularization. So these are our diagnostic images. So we see on the image of the left, a uh, CTO of the uh, anterior tibial with distal reconstitution of flow. We have a severely diffusely diseased peroneal artery. And in the far picture on the right, you see an incomplete uh, plantar loop with CTO of the dorsalis pedis. I'll give you a moment to take in these images. So the intervention details, we did ultrasound guided left femoral anti-grade axis. Uh, we used a Vions catheter to, you, to cross into the distal um, uh, anterior tibial and it crossed uh, fairly easily, we were surprised. Uh, followed by angioplasty with a 2.0, then a 2.5 to 10 balloon. Unfortunately, we were enabled to cross the DPCTO with the other Vions, Pilot 50 or Miracle 6. We then ballooned uh, the peroneal artery with a 2.5 by 30 balloon and these are our final results. So you see here successful recanalization of the anterior tibial CTO. The peroneal artery is left with minimal residual stenosis and no dissection. Uh, the distal runoff in the DP, however, remains impaired, and there's incomplete uh, pedal plantar loop. So the question here now that we ask ourselves in the cath table, is this enough? Will the patient heal? You know, um, knows, right? This is his one month follow-up visit. Uh, so his rest pain significantly improved at that point. Uh, he had improved healing of his third toe ulcer, although you can't appreciate it on this picture. And his great toe now has demarcation. This is two months. Uh, no rest pain, continued healing of the third toe ulcer. Actually, it's almost completely healed. And his great toe amputation is healing well. These are some uh, before and after pictures. So uh, we have a very uh, ugly foot on the left and an improved looky one on the right. And then you see the perfusion assessed in white um, with increased perfusion to the third, uh, the three toes on the foot. And you can see the sort of before and after pictures. Uh, I'll go over this in a little bit more detail. There are ways to uh, provide quantitative analysis of this perfusion, um, which showed improve on this patient as well. So just some objectives. Um, I'm going to go briefly over some of the challenges in CLI, but I want to spend most of the time spending a, li a little bit of time discussing uh, Florence's angiography, uh, just a quick brief review of the literature and how it may be utilized in CLI. Um, so CLI defined when there is significant ischemic rest pain and or lower extremity ulceration when hemodynamic findings incompatible with wound healing. Usually this is an ABI of less than 0.4 or pressures below 30. We know mortality in these patients are high. We know amputation rates are high. And we know re-amputation rates are high in these patients. Living in South Texas, this is very, very true in our, in our uh, community. Uh, revascularization does reduce amputations and remove morbidity. However, a lot remain ischemic and require secondary amputation, and there are lots of challenges in identifying those individuals who would benefit from it. A lot of this is the limitations of our current modalities that we use to assess uh, perfusion. So ABIs um, can be falsely elevated, and I think in this case they were falsely elevated in this patient due to diabetes, age, and CKD. 
TBI, the data is limited. The cutoff is less than 0.7, but this is really not evidence-based. And if you don't have healthy toes, you can't do TBIs. Um, they also don't assist us real well in tracking um, healing either. Um, TCOMs are pretty good, but if you have edema or inflammation, they can be limiting. Uh, skin perfusion pressure, there's probably a lot of da more data on this mechanism to evaluate uh, microcirculatory blood flow. But um, if you can't measure the area with a cuff, um, uh, blood occlusion can be painful to the patient. So quickly, the Luna Fluorensis Angiography System. So this is a diagnostic tool that utilizes IV fluorescent dye. It's called endocyanin green. Um, it sequentially images blood flow in the vessels, microvessels, and the tissue. It uses a low power laser with a couple device camera to sequence the ICG perfusion at the surface of the skin. So it's not measuring macro vessel, it's uh, measuring perfusion down to the skin. Um, endocyanin green is injected in a peripheral IV. It's safe. Uh, it's non-radioactive, toxicity is low, the only contraindication is iodine allergy. It has a very short half-life, so you can re-image multiple times to get your images in a few minutes. Uh, it's rapidly bound by plasma albulin and undergoes hepatic metabolism, so it can be used in CKD patients uh, safely, which we know a lot of our patients have CKD. Um, the intensity is proportional to the rate of perfusion in the affected tissue. So the wider, the more red the image, the higher the intensity of perfusion. You could do visual and quantitative, quantitative assessment of wound to perine wound perfusion. I don't want to spend too much time on this, but this is the way they do quantitative analysis. They measure the intensity of the ICG, the magnitude of the intensity from baseline to peak, which is called the ingress, the rate of intensity, um, and then the magnitude and rate of intensity for peak to the end of the study. So these are some of the things the software does already automatically to measure the intensity of the uh, fluorescence dye. So what do we know about uh, its use in PAD and CLI? Well, when I was reading about it, we don't know very much. Uh, most of the data is in helping assess patients' uh, progress on hyperbaric oxygen therapy treatment. So they identify those patients who would benefit and then they follow them after several treatments to see if they're improving to see whether or not to continue it. There have been a few case reports that describe its use in assessing perfusion during lower extremity bypass and in determining the level of amputation. So they'll actually use it in the OR to see if their tibial bypass pr provided enough um, perfusion to allow the, the ulcer to heal. Its use in CLI has been shown in very small studies, uh, but they have in those studies been able to demonstrate increased perfusion and improved healing of the ulcers, although these are very small subset of patients, like 13 patients, when that, that angi particular angiosome underwent targeted intervention. And there has been one study that shows a correlation of improved quantitative parameters, those rates of ingress, ingress rate, and egress rate with improvement in ABI following revascularization. So there's just some data, but not very much. So the true take-home points are that many questions remain. Um, there's no real standard technique in how these procedures are done, lots of variation in the studies, no objective parameter on how to accurately de depict the perfusion, um, no real studies correlating uh, with the improved outcomes. And then one thing that our podiatrist mentioned that I thought was interesting is not all patients who undergo revascularization show improved perfusion, and we really don't understand why. Is this loss of collateral vessels, embolization? Uh, microvascular dysfunction, so it may, may be helpful to identify which patients will truly benefit from revascularization. It's not widely available. Only one podiatrist utilizes this software in San Antonio, and she does these uh, probably once or twice a month. Is it cost effective? So there are a lot of answer questions that we still need to answer. Um, but I do think that this case does demonstrate how we can utilize this tool to see if we've uh, improved perfusion, maybe even on the cath lab table, see if our intervention did what it needed to do. Um, and uh, I think it can, uh, we do need to do further study to see how to best utilize. And it does emphasize to me, though, that managing CLI truly requires a collaborative effort. It wasn't just us who helped this patient heal, but it was the frequent appointments with this podiatrist, the frequent wound care, frequent follow-up. Um, it really is a collaborative effort. Questions? Great presentation. Very interesting technology. And again, it's, it's like you said, the availability, is something that's not really reimbursed, and being able to acquire these type of perfusion assessments in a way to tell us and hopefully give us more information as to what to do would be best, you know, if you could do it in the, on the actual table mm -hmm. so you can make your decision at that time.
But I, I think, it, especially with your case, it was a good outcome. I think you knew that toe was, you're going to lose that toe. You just wanted to make sure that was going to heal. So. Yeah. I do think there, there is a code for it, and there is reimburses for it. Uh, but whether it's worth it, we'll see. Yeah. Uh, this really is the holy grail of CLI um, mm -hmm. intervention and making sure we have adequate perfusion pressure to the tissue that needs it. And right now, our tools are really limited. I just want to uh, make the point that ABIs are normal or near normal in a third of our CLI patients, so that's mm -hmm. garbage and you shouldn't use it. So in my practice, I really try to use toe brachial indices and toe systolic pressure specifically, although it's not the, um, uh, uh, the, the best and you can't use it, obviously, in people with TMA. Mm -hmm. So that's where this really comes in nice. We, uh, when I was at Cleveland Clinic, uh, Dr. Shishabor used this um, uh, a bit as we were mm -hmm. studying it. And one of the things we found is um, it was really challenging to know um, that change from some, uh, we, we did a pre-procedure in the office and then we did Luna afterwards. And so I wanted to ask you um, uh, both monitoring in the office with this device and then post-procedure, what's the utility? And then the timing post-procedure. So there's a lot of changes and sometimes we see kind of crummy runoff with really high peripheral vascular resistance, particularly at the farther distal you go. Does this, does this testing change two hours post-procedure, six hours, 12 hours the next day? What are your thoughts on that? That's a good question, and I, I think we really don't know. Um, honestly, we, we, the reason the podiatrist did the post-imaging is because we asked. We wanted to know what, how improv, perfusion improved. But I would assume that if the surgeons were able to demonstrate it in a few cases that when they do bypass, uh, perfusion Im improves in that toe, then that maybe we could use it um, right during the cath case. But again, we, we deal with more smaller vessels. So in all honesty, I don't think we really know the answer to that. And CLI really is a multidisciplinary thing and um, to the point of just good nutrition and this being bound to albumin, how do you think folks with really poor nutrition, low albumin, how that might affect how this immunofluorescent is going to, you know, your counts, how you're going to register counts or account for that in those sorts of patients? Do you think it'll matter? You know, I don't with my limited experience, I really don't think it'll matter, but, uh, cause I think it'll show sort of relative perfusion. So maybe you'll at least be able to see some areas better than others, maybe not light up as well, but I don't think it'll matter. But in all honesty, um, I don't know the answer to that question. All right, thank you very much. Thank it was you. a great presentation.